Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from OSCON 2014 in Portland, Oregon. I'm here with Phil Jackson with SoftLayer. Phil, how are you doing? Doing great. So your SoftLayer is part of a larger company, a larger play in the market. And yeah, absolutely. IBM? Yeah, we're part of IBM now. Uh, about just, just a little over a year ago, we were acquired by IBM. Okay, and so what does SoftLayer do? It sounds like you're some layer in the stack somewhere. Yeah, so we're infrastructure as a service, and so we're kind of the, the new premier cloud offering for IBM. Uh, and so we offer you know, public cloud, your, your virtual machines, kind of a, a, in a commoditized type environment. Uh, we also offer what we call bare metal servers, uh, which are servers without hypervisors. Uh, similar to like what you would see in a colo, where you, know, you, you purchase a you know, physical server, you, you rent some space, you put it in the data center. Uh, but in, in this model, we actually own the hardware. We manage the hardware for you. Uh, so that way you don't have to run to the data center in the middle of the night when a stick of RAM goes bad or something like that. Uh, so that's, those are kind of the two major offerings that software has. You're the soft layer to manage hardware. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we, we like to see ourselves kind of as like a, a data center management platform, right? Uh, the idea is to offer uh, the same level of access and transparency and control that you would have if you had your own data center, let's say, in your, you know, maybe in your closet at the office or in your basement, wherever it is. Maybe it's actually a colo facility. Uh, provide that level of access and that, that level of customization, uh, even as far as things like the network are concerned. Just try to give over as much of that as possible, but in a model, a business model, that's a little bit different than having to go out and buy millions of dollars worth of equipment to, to support. And so you mentioned something earlier about auto scale. Yeah, so uh, what what uh, we did a talk earlier this week, myself and Harold Hannon, uh, one of the members of Software Labs, they're like our R&D group. Uh, we did a, a talk uh, about an application that we built, kind of, kind of a fun thing. We wanted to show off how you could maybe build an auto-scaling application. Um, and, and what I mean by that is uh, be able to take in some type of information as a trigger, uh, which normally would be something like uh, CPU metrics or memory metrics or something like that about the health of your environment, and then be able to fire up additional resources to meet a specific need and then cancel them off after that need's no longer required. Uh, but we did something a little bit different. Uh, we thought it would be fun to have that trigger be Twitter uh, and just allow anyone in the world to be able to, you know, hashtag uh, software for SETI or software for CERN, uh, which are two scientific projects that have a yep. grid computing components to it. Uh, and whenever you hashtag one of those in your tweets, we actually spin up a virtual machine in the software cloud with a point client of uh, one of those two projects and run it for an hour and contribute to the grid computing of each one of those projects. And the talk was basically just about how we put it together and the different tools that we use to, to accomplish that. So how could that be applied in the future? I mean, in, yeah. in different different scenarios? Yeah, you know, normally what you would have, especially if you have like, a, let's say a business need or maybe you're running an e-commerce solution or something like that, you would have some type of monitoring system uh, that, that's aware of the health of your environment. Uh, so maybe uh, during a, a peak period Period, you get a whole bunch of traffic coming in uh, and your monitor notices that you have maybe a certain number of HTTP connections or maybe your processor sp spikes to a specific level and then you would have NIMSoft or whatever it is, Nagios, reach out to uh, your, your, your provider. Maybe it's a, a, a cloud provider like software, maybe it's even your own private cloud, maybe you're on OpenStack, whatever it happens to be, you're going to reach out via an API to that environment and provision ad additional resources to meet that additional load that you have. And then once that, that system notices that you no longer need that capacity, or maybe you have some other metrics to determine when, it will then remove those resources so you no longer get billed for them. And that's, that's really kind of the big advantage of the new cloud movement that we're in, is you only have to pay for what you need when you need it, rather than going out and having all this stuff in your garage. And, and how much of what you guys do is open source? Uh, a good bit of the stuff that we work with is. Uh, our API is completely open, we have all the documentation stuff online, uh, and we do a lot of work with open source communities. A lot of the stuff that we use inside of software is proprietary though, so we don't, we don't open up a lot of that type of stuff. Okay. Uh, but we do a lot of work with OpenStack, uh, even SaltStack of course right down the road, uh, some of the configuration, ma configuration management platforms, Puppet, uh, Knife, uh, pretty much anything we can, get, we can do to, to help those projects out and also allows other uh, allows third parties to have another ingress into software. So if, if we're inside of Salt and you're able to order software servers and manage software servers, it makes it easier for people to on 
onboard onto software. And we also get to contribute back to those communities and help improve those tools. So is there a particular industry mm -hmm. or uh, community that uses software more than others? I mean, is it, are you seeing any trends like which type of companies? You know, I think that's probably one of the most interesting things about software, you have everything from a hobbyist like me, I, I have a couple servers just for random stuff that I'm working on, playing around with, uh, all the way into enterprise level where you see things like uh, uh, enterprise level booking systems for airlines, uh, medical HIPAA compliance type stuff where people are storing a whole bunch of uh, different data for hospitals. Uh, it's really kind of all over the place and that's, that's one of the things that makes the job interesting at least for me. Uh, I've done everything from uh, working on giant sand solutions for uh, facial recognition software for governments, all the way to helping a, a comic book, an online comic book provider, figure out how to best store all the comics and, and different tiers of performance oh, storage. Yeah. So it's, it's really kind of all over the place. And, and being part of IBM, mm -hmm. you fit in their services somewhere in there, and where does that typically yeah. fit? So yeah. we're in the, the DG, GTS organization, Global Technology Services, uh, and we're really focused specifically on the infrastructure need. Yeah. And then yeah. IBM has all their service layers that they're, they're putting on top of us, things like Bluemix uh, and uh, their SCE Plus offerings. All those kind of things are, are going to be started to, to migrate and offered on software, as well as things like Watson, which is really yeah. kind of cool. I, I, I've yeah. gotten to do some, some work with the Watson guys, had some conversations. That's just a, a really a really interesting thing uh, to be able to work on a project like that. So where do you think SoftLayer will be if, if we have a conversation next mm -hmm. year at this time? What would you have hoped to accomplish in a year from now? Sure. So for myself personally, I would say uh, I would like to see even more involvement in open source. Uh, my team is pretty small right now, uh, so the amount of uh, impact we're able to have is obviously relevant to the size that we're at. So as I grow my team, I hope to see a lot more, uh, a lot more uh, contributions back out to open source, uh, specifically from the soft layer, uh, soft layer group. Uh, and also, I know kind of as a as a company as a whole, uh, uh, I think our, our, as our CEO says we should be the de facto platform for the internet, right? Uh, and so uh, the, the real vision of software is to become uh, really that, that default setting in your mind when you think, hey, we need to throw up some servers in the, uh, to, to host a web application, whether it be enterprise or a hobby, software should be one of the first names that we think of. And so uh, that, that's really the goal we're working towards is providing a solution that's going to be able to not only meet the demands of the small guy, but also the large enterprise. And one of the things we announced this year was uh, a very large expansion into our, our data center uh, locations. Uh, so we, we put about $2, two billion dollars into expanding our infrastructure footprint. Uh, so we're having data centers pop up pretty much all across the globe uh, in addition to the uh, 10 or 12 that we already had a software before the acquisition. So uh, hopefully uh, if we talk again next year, there'll be about double the amount of data centers <laughs> and hopefully double the amount of open source contributions. Excellent. Well, we look forward to having that conversation Absolutely. next year. Thank Thanks, you. Phil. It was a pleasure. Thanks.